Hi, Ashley here with hardhookhome.com and today we're going to do the easy peasy lemon squeezy pullover with long sleeves. This pattern calls for two panels, so there's a front and then a back that we will be making in this video. And then we're going to sew up the seams and add the sleeves. So as you can see, this pattern is worked in rows where we start at the bottom and we continue up in, in even rows all the way until we get to right at your chest and then we start increasing to go out on both sides and then this portion here will end up being your armhole. So this is side number one. We're going to go ahead and start side number two with this yarn. We call for an N 9mm hook, MN 9mm hook, and a worsted weight yarn. Any brand of worsted weight yarn will work. Size 4, medium weight, um, good for basically anything. Okay, the way that this pattern works, it's customizable to each body type. So your beginning chain is either going to be 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, any multiple of 10. So how you get that number, how to determine your size, you take your measuring tape and you wrap it around the widest part of your torso. For me, that's either my breasts or my hips, and that's about 42 inches around. So to get that, since we're making two panels, a front panel and a back panel, we're going to take that 42 inches and we're going to cut it in half. We're going to chain to that length and then we're going to chain to the next multiple of 10. So for me, with my gauge, the way that I crochet with this yarn and this hook, 48 chains gets me to 21 inches, which is half of my width needed, right? So I have 48, so I'm going to start each panel with 50. I'm going to go up to the next multiple of 10. The, this is explained much better in the written pattern on hearthookhome.com that I will link in this, in, this post, in this video. So if you need to look at that to see you know, what you're going for, then you can do that as well. Okay, so first we're going to slip, make a slip knot, and we're going to chain to that number. For me, with um, my measurement, that number is going to be um, 50. So I'm going to make a chain of 50. Okay, so this is 50 chains and this is going to be the width needed for one panel. So this is just from one of my hips to my other hip. And it is a little bit stretchy. So this is 50 chains. Now to start your first row, we're going to chain one, and we're going to single crochet in the second chain from hook. So not that one, but this one. We're gonna single crochet. And now we're going to double crochet into the next. And now we're going to single crochet into the next. And then we're going to double crochet into the next. So all we're doing is we're repeating a single crochet and a double crochet, which is the lemon peel stitch. That's why it's called the easy peasy lemon squeezy pullover, because we use the lemon peel stitch. And it kind of looks like a lemon peel. If you kind of look, it's kind of textured and very pretty. So we will continue single crochet and double crochet alternating down the entire length of this row. And now we're going to do that for all of our chains all the way down, ending with a double crochet. When you get to the end of this row, we are going to end with that double crochet because we have an even number of stitches. And then to start a new row, we're going to chain one and we're basically going to com continue making rows as in this manner until we complete 27 rows. So I'm not going to sit here and crochet 27 rows because that would just be boring. <laughs> so I will do that um, without you. And then when I get done with row 27, 
I will meet up with you again. I will go ahead and start row two though, just so we know what we're doing to start a new row. So now it, I have finished with a double crochet. This is my entire beginning chain. You'll notice that the, it is kind of squishy and it is a little bit holy. That is because we used a bigger hook with the worsted weight yarn. So with the lemon peel stitch, there's a video tutorial for that on this YouTube channel as well. But you're going to, when you come back through the other side, you're going to put all your double crochets in these big holes here. So that's where your double crochets go. Your singles are going to go into this row's doubles. So let's start that new row, and we'll make sure we understand that before I meet you back up at row 28, okay? So here's our completed row one. To start a new row, we're going to chain one and turn. And now we're going to single crochet into the first right here. And we're going to double crochet into the next. single crochet into the next and double into the next. So like we said, all of these holes here, the bigger holes are going to be your double crochets. Those flat shorter ones are going to be your single crochets. And that really is what gives it its nice texture as you're going along with the lemon peel stitch. So we are literally going to do the same exact thing for 27 rows and when we get to row 28 we're going to start those increases right where it hits your chest. So I am going to continue in rows until I complete row 27 and then we will meet back up to start row 28 together. Okay, so here we are with our 27 rows of the second panel of the Easy Peasy Lemon Squeezy. If you lose count and you need to recount your rows, it can be kind of difficult with this stitch because it's kind of, you know, wobbly back and forth. What I like to do when I'm counting is I go into where the tail is on the right side and this would be your first row and then they're offset every row. So they'll back and forth a little bit, but you can count them this way. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So now we are ready to start row 28, which will go back the other way. And this is going to be our first increase row. So at the end of row 27, we're going to chain one, turn our work. So this is the beginning of row 28. Now it says to do two single crochets in each of the first two stitches. So we go one single crochet, two single crochets, and then in the next stitch we do one, two. Okay, and this is going to increase to make this side kind of go out just a little bit like we have in this in this um, completed version. How it starts to go out, right? Hold on, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, how it starts to go out right here, this is what we're doing, is we're getting to this point and we're gonna go out now, okay? So we've done our two increases in the first two. So we did one, two, three, four. Now we're gonna complete the entire row as normal, single, double, single, double, all the way to the end. And then when we get to the end, we're going to even up our increases. So we did two in the first two here, we're gonna do two in the last two here so that it's even on both sides. So we're just gonna continue, single, double, single, double, and we're going to do this all the way to the end. Okay, at the last two here, we're going to do two single crochets in each. So that is the end of row 28. To start row 29 and 30, we're going to complete those exactly the same way as we have been the entire pattern. So we're going to do our chain one and then we're going to single, double, single, 
double. And we're going to do this for two rows. We're just finishing 30 right now. So we are preparing to start row 31, which is going to be another increase row. We're going to repeat row 28. So just do the same thing you did in row 28, chain one. We're going to do another increase row. So we're going to do two single crochets in the first two stitches. One, two, one, two. And then you complete the rest of the row as normal. When you get to the end, do the same exact thing with the last two stitches. Two in each of the last two stitches. And then after that, we'll do another two rows, just the regular lemon peel stitch with single, double, single, double. And then we'll do increases again. And then we'll continue two more rows. And then we'll do increases a final time to where all along the side of the pullover, you're going to have a total of four increase rows. So those rows would be 28, 31, 34, and 37, if you, want, if you read the pattern here. So you have a total of four increase rows with two rows in between them. And then we will be ready to move on to the armholes. So I'm going to finish this increase row. I'm about to run out of yarn here. I'm going to grab my next ball. Okay, the last two of this row, we're going to do two in each stitch. Two single crochets in each of these two stitches. And now we're going to start a new row, chain one, and we're going to continue the lemon peel stitch all the way across, single, double, single, double. Continue this for two more rows and then we'll do another increase row. Okay, so now we've done two solid rows of lemon peel after the last increase, so it's time for another increase. So, let's see how many we've got. That's where we added yarn earlier. So we've got one row of increases and one row of increases. So now we've done row 28, 29, 30. This is 31 right here. And then 32. 33. So we're going to do row 34, which is repeat row 28, which means we're doing another increase row. So we're going to chain one. And we're going to do two in the first two. And then continue the lemon peel all the way across to the end to the last two, two stitches in which we will put two stitches each. When we get to the last two here, since we are on row 34, we are repeating. So we're going to do two single crochets in this one, two single crochets in this one. And now we're going to chain one and go back through and we're going to do row 35 and 36, which is the basic lemon peel stitch pattern. Single, double, single, double. And we'll do this for two more rows and then we'll have our final increase. So now we're at the end of row 36. We're going to go on to row 37 with this next row. Row 37 is the last increase row. So we're going to repeat 28 one more time. See how this is doing a nice curve here? We're going to do one more increase and then we're going to go just up for 12 rows to, 12 rows to create that armhole. So we're going to do one more row of increases right here. Chain, 
two in the first two. And then lemon peel the whole way down, single double, the whole way down to the row. And then we're going to do two more increases in the last two stitches. So now I'm at the end of row 37. Well, I'm going to go ahead and do rows 38 through 49, which is the same old lemon peel stitch. I'm creating the arm roll, armholes this time where I'm just going up 12 rows. When I'm done with that, we will catch back up and we will sew the sides up together and we will sew up the shoulders together. Okay, so now I finished both panels, the front and the back. of the sweater. So now what we're going to do, I like to fasten off leaving a little bit of a long tail and we'll use this for sewing. So what we're going to do is we're going to line up the front and the back to where they line up perfectly with their edging here. See how this makes a nice little curve. So now remember that this part here is your armhole this part we are going to sew together the entire length from here all the way over to here. We're going to sew this together to create your side seam. So I like to lay them flat next to each other like this and then I take my yarn needle, take some yarn from the bottom here from where I started. I'm going to thread that needle and so now this goes over here. So now we're going to take these two pieces and literally sew them back and forth. Make sure we can see this well. So we will just go back and forth between these two pieces. And you don't want to do it too tight to where it creates a, a big pucker. Just tight enough to where it holds it together because remember that the weave on the rest of the sweater is pretty loose. So you don't want this, the seam to be super tight. And we're just going to sew this up the whole way, making sure that doesn't pucker and that we are doing it evenly on each side. So for every row we sew here, we want to sew one row here so that we end up at the right place when we get to the armpit. Just keep on sewing back and forth and then we're going to throw on the sleeves and then we're almost done. It's looking awesome. So when we get to where it starts to get flat again, that's where we're going to stop. When we get to right here, we're going to stop. So we've got to do this area here. Now this area, it's very important not to do too tight because if you do, when you raise your arms, you will see the pucker. So it's important that you don't sew those too tight. So we don't want them loose, but we don't want them super tight either. Okay, now I'm going to leave this tail here until I get the other side sewn as well, just to make sure that I've got that exactly where I want it to be. Because if, if this armhole ends up being a little bit too big or too small, we don't want this to be already woven into where we can't change that. So now we've got one half of our sweater. So now we're going to sew the other side over here.
almost there. And then we'll lay it out and we'll check both sides to make sure that they're even before we move on to the sleeves. All right, so it looks like we're about even on both sides. Let's take a look. So now we've got a sweater opening, yay! <laughs> um, so here is our styling. We are going up, 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 and then we start going out. And this will be our armholes here. So I'm going to take this, I'm gonna fold it in half, Okay, and I'm going to use this to make sure that these are folded up to the same place on both sides because I want to make sure that my armholes are the same size. So it looks like this one is sewn a little bit more than this one. Let's make sure that this one's not sewn too much, which I don't think it is. So I'm going to sew up this side just a couple more stitches. Okay, let's try this. I just sewed a couple more stitches. So here's the one side. Here's my two armholes, and it looks like those are pretty much perfect for armholes. See how they're the same height? And now, if you have larger biceps, I would definitely try it on at this point before you sew up the shoulders to make sure that these armholes will be large enough. You'll just literally put it on. If you want to actually wear it. You could take stitch markers and just kind of pin it together up at the top um, so that you can go ahead and try it on. And then we're going to use our tail from when we stopped these panels to sew these shoulders together on both sides. When we fasten off each panel, leave a little bit of a tail so that we can use this for sewing instead of adding more yarn to sew it together. It helps to keep the bulk down from the, from the seams. So we're going to lay, this is, the, this is the top shoulder seam, right? So here's our armhole, here's our shoulder seam. We're going to take the yarn and we're going to work back and forth between the left and the right panels, or the front and the back panels, and just sew them up across. And we're not going to do this one too tight either. We want to make sure that we've got a good um, seam, but it's not too tight. Of course, we don't want it to look like that, so let's tighten this up a little bit. Okay, there we go. So literally, we are just going back and forth between these two sides to sew up the shoulder seam. This is called the mattress stitch. It's my favorite way to sew two pieces of crochet together. It's really like tying a shoelace or tying a corset if you had a corset. Now on mine, I like to leave mine more of a boat neck so that it could fall off one shoulder. So I leave a 15 inch opening for my head. So depending on how, like what size you're making on this, you might sew up a little bit more than I will so that you have that 15 inches for the head opening, for the neck opening. If you want it to be a little bit more form fitting, then just sew up more or more fitting around the neck, then just sew up more of the neck area. So here we go, we're doing pretty good here. After a while, I'm gonna to flip to the other side to make sure that I'm doing them evenly so that I don't have one side way tighter than the other or way more sewn up than the other. And 
and I am not going to weave this in yet. I'm going to wait until I'm all the way done with the sweater before I weave this end in, either one of these ends, because I want to make sure that I put it on after I'm done and that it feels good and everything's good to go. So here is my shoulder seam I'm working on. Um, here in a second I'm going to flip over and do this side with this tail and come in from the other side and make sure that I've got the 15 inches across here. I'm going to measure my opening to make sure that this is the 15 inches and I have not fastened off on either side so we'll make sure that's right at 14 let's see actually that looks pretty good that's about 14 and a half so I'm going to go with that for now and remember I don't sew any of this up or finalize it until I'm actually done with everything so in order to start the sleeves okay I'm going to tuck these yarn ends inside so that they don't get in my way. So now I've got all my yarn ends inside, tucked nicely away. Now, normally I would go and try this on at this point to double check yet again that the armholes are good, you know, everything's kosher before we move on. All right, so I've tried on the sweater and it feels great. So I'm going to go ahead and start my sleeves. Now if you're going to make the long sleeve version, all you're going to do is about a little cuff. If you're going to do, I mean the short sleeve version, all you're going to do is a little cuff. If you're going to do a long sleeve version, you're just going to, we're going to work around this opening and then you're going to go for as long as you want the sleeve to be. I did about 30 rows on mine because I wanted it to be super slouchy. So if that's what you want, um, slouchy as well, then that's what we're going to do. So for our arm hole, we've got this lovely little opening here. We are going to attach the yarn at the base of the arm hole. So we're just going to insert our hook, pull that yarn up through. Now what we're going to do is we're going to chain one and we're going to single crochet in that same space to kind of lock that into place. I like to pull that one just a little bit tighter. Now we're going to do the lemon peel stitch as we have been. So we're going to yarn over, we're going to do a double crochet in this one. Tuck that yarn in inside. We're going to do a single crochet in the next. Double crochet in the next. Single crochet in the next. Double. Single. Let me see if I can get it in there. There we go. And sometimes these little stitches are kind of harder to get into. Uh, that's okay with me because I feel like it makes the seam a little bit stronger. So just make sure that you are evenly spacing your stitches. That's the most important thing. You also want to make sure that you end on an odd number. And I will tell you why when we get around to the next part or to the end of this row. Just make sure you're spacing them evenly. So there's my shoulder seam from where we sewed. This is my shoulder seam that I just went into. So this would be the first side. I'm going to go ahead and count my stitches so that I can make sure that I have the same on the other side so that one side isn't bigger than the other. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. We've got 17 including this top one. So now we're going to do make sure that we've got, you know, 34 or however many you have on yours. So that was a single. So now let's do a double and a single, double,
Oh, that one I don't like. We're going to do this one over. See how this one had kind of a bigger hole because of that double? It, when I put that stitch in there, it really created a big hole. So instead, I'm going to go through the side of this stitch, and it'll keep it from pulling that hole way too big. This is the bottom again, and so it's a little bit tighter, but I want that because it'll help to keep it secure. Now, I have reached the beginning where I started. Here's my tail, you can see. So now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna count and make sure that I have a good number of stitches and that they are even on both sides. I don't want one side to have like 20 stitches and the other side to have 15. I wanna make sure that they're even on both sides. So let's count those. Okay, and I count from backwards because I think it's easier. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. Good. 33 is a good number because we had 16 on this side. The one on the top made 17, and so this will be 16 over here. So 33 is a really good number. You want to make sure that you have an odd number because these are two single crochets. Now, because of the lemon peel stitch and the way that it looks, the first one was a single, so now we're going to double into that without joining. We're not joining at all. We're just going to go straight double into the first stitch of this row. So now we are working in a spiral. So there was a double. Here's This is the double from last row, so we're going to single into this, double into this, single, double, single, double, single, double, and literally we are doing this until we get the sleeve as long as we want. That's, this is exactly what we're doing the entire time. So just single double. I did about 30 rows on the first one that I did. This is my second long sleeve version. So I'm going to do 30 and see what happens and see if I like it. Um, I might end up doing 25 rows. I might end up doing 32. It also depends on the yarn that you're using and how stretchy it is. And, you know, if you want it to be looser, I mean... To where you can roll up the the ends I thought that was really cute on my last one that I made so you can make this sleeve as long as or as short as you like I do not do any decreases on the sleeve because I want it to be a very casual laid-back relaxing sweater I don't want it to be tight at all anywhere so it's more relaxing this way now just continue with your single double repeat this we're at the bottom of the armhole again so I'm about to start row three so this is be row one and this is row two and just keep going until you get it to the length that you want it to be now one last thing before I complete these sleeves and get back to you is you want to make sure when you start your rows with your sleeves that you have since we have 33 stitches on this arm we want to make sure that this arm when we go around has 33 stitches also so that it's not you know this sleeve is not smaller than this one or vice versa so I'm going to do 30 rows on my sleeves and then I will meet you back up for the bottom cuff and we will be done all right so now I've got um, the sleeves finished I finished sleeve number one and I am finishing sleeve number two. I made sure that these are the same length. So when you hold the sleeves out, they are the same length. And then I made sure to try it on to make sure that my sleeve was as long as I wanted it to be. For the last row, or you can do two rows if you want, we're going to do a single crochet the entire way around just to kind of create a little cuff there. So we'll single crochet all the way around just to kind of give it a nicer, finishing touch. You can kind of see where your double crochets are so that you can continue just past that point. 
I've still got some showing up here. All right, looks like that's my last double crochet. So I'm gonna go just a little bit past that, one stitch past that. So that I'm back to where I started my singles. This is my last double right here. So we're gonna go into this one. I'm gonna create that stitch. I'm gonna clip it down here. We're gonna pull that straight through. And then we're gonna take our yarn needle and weave in that end. The way that I like to do this is the invisible join where you go into the next stitch. And I've got a video tutorial just for this. Go into that next stitch and then go into the back half only of the previous stitch. And there it kind of hides your seam nice for you so that you can't really tell where you ended. And then we're gonna weave in these ends just as best as we can to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. All right, that'll work. Set that aside. All right, I did go ahead and try this on and I went ahead and sewed up my shoulder seam. So you can definitely, um, I did, I sewed it up, but I, I sealed it too. You can definitely do as big or as small as you want, depending on how big you want your head to fit through. Let me close off this as well. All right, since it's the cuff, I wanna make sure that's nice and woven in. All right, we'll clip this too. Now we are so close to being done, yay! We have a completed sweater with our two sleeves with the ends woven in, yay. They're both the same size, which is always a plus. <laughs> and then now we're going to do the bottom, okay? So this string is from my um, my right here where I sewed that together. So I'll weave that in here in a second. What we're going to do is we're going to go around the bottom hem of the sweater. Just around here to kind of give that a nice bottom cuff. So I do this uh, a special way. Not that it's special to me or anything else. Other people have done this too, I'm sure. We're going to go at the seam. So this is my seam where we sewed this together. We're going to insert our hook somewhere right here into the seam of that. We're going to pull up a string, pull up a loop. We're going to chain one. We're going to single crochet in the same stitch. And then we're going to go around the entire piece and we're going to work in between the stitches of the first row. So if you look, you can see that these, the, these are my stitches from the first row, right? These are my chains. And instead of going into these loops and making these like super holy, we're just going to work in between the stitch. Just do single crochets in between those stitches. Can you see where this one's going to go here? And then this next one is going to go here. Next one here, here. Okay, so this one we're going to put one here, 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 here. So you can see the V's. These V's are a little bit bigger because it's the opposite stitch. So just keep going in between those stitches and we're going to do this all the way around. Now you can do this bottom hem or bottom cuff. You can do as tall as you want or as short as you want. You can choose not to do it at all if you don't want to do it at all. It's really just up to you and what you want um, as your final preference. So I like to have it on there because I feel like it kind of ties everything together, but it's not 100% necessary to do either. 
So I keep going in between these stitches I'm probably going to do two rows of this, maybe three. Um, I think that it looks nice. We only did one row on the sleeves. You could do two rows on the sleeves. You can do more or less or however many you want. It's completely up to you. I prefer this look. Around, see how this is kind of giving that nice little edge. We'll go through a couple times and make that super pretty. Now here's our other seam. So we're gonna go right on the other side of that V. We're gonna catch part of that bottom stitch because I wanna make sure that that's a good anchor stitch, especially if it's in the seam. I wanna make sure that we're getting a good hold of that yarn there. And I also like to be conscious when I'm doing this bottom row, I like to be conscious that I'm not pulling my yarn too tight because I don't want the bottom of the sweater to go like this and then all of a sudden go and get real tight at the bottom. So I want to make sure that I'm conscious with my um, tension so that I'm not too incredibly tight. And this is it. We will just continue going around in single crochet rows. Do not join. So we'll do a spiral just like we did when we started the armhole or the tar started the sleeve around the armhole. So we'll just continue to work in a spiral. I am almost back to where I started and then I'll do another row. We'll finish off using the same technique, the invisible join that we used on the sleeve cuffs so that you can't tell where I joined and stopped. And that is it. Isn't this like an easy peasy sweater, <laughs> sweater, easy peasy squeezy sweater. Perfect. I love it. I love it for hanging out at home. The softer the yarn, the squishier the yarn, the squishier the sweater will be. So I used a lot softer yarn this time. For the blue uh, sweater that is in the pictures on hearthookhome.com, for this pattern I used Karen One Pound. This is soft and sleek from Hobby Lobby, and I really like the way this one feels. Of course, the Karen One Pound, I have washed it, and it's fine, too. Um, I also have one that I made in short sleeve using Big Twist, and that one was super cute, too. So it really just depends on what, you've, what yarn you've got available to you. As long as you're using worsted weight yarn, you'll be fine. Actually, you could use any other yarn, but I feel like if you used... Um, Something else, it just might get really heavy. Okay, so, I mean like a bulky yarn. So now we're back to where I started. So instead of going into this stitch again, we're just gonna continue single crocheting into the top of that first single crochet. And I'm just gonna go around again, and then I will be done. Fasten off, weave in all ends, and that is it.